So with the rapid release of many new mini PCs, I purchased these two older models some time ago. And the question remains, are they still functional and good for emulation? Because sometimes you can find these things for a bargain price on AliExpress. Think about like $90 or $120. But with the fast paced releases of new mini PCs, are these things still worth picking up? Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. Mini PCs, I love these things. Why? Because they are small, they are quite powerful nowadays, and they are getting really cheap now. Where we needed to pay hundreds of freaking like your dollars for a mini PC, we can buy them for not a lot of money. Think about sometimes $75, $100, all kinds of cheap prices, but especially when they're becoming a little bit older. I have been, let's say, buying these, let's say, let's say, bargain price like mini PCs, and I wanted to chit chat about these two because they are quite interesting when it comes to the specifications. And the reason why, let's make these things an absolutely emulation machines with not a lot of money. How you can do this, also, I'm going to chit chat about, but also what are the possibilities. So, first of all, we have two different models over here. This is the J3455, and this is an already quite an old one, and it comes with 4 GB of RAM and 6. 64 gigabyte of ROM. We're not going to actually use the eternal storage. We're just going to leave it. And yeah, we're just going to use ourselves also the J4125. This is a mini PC that we have seen many times before on the channel in different kind of form factors. RAM 8 gigabytes, having a ROM of 28 gigabyte, but also this is not going to be used because we're going to use Batasira with an external storage. But okay, so what are we actually getting? That is of course the question. Another thing I also need to point out, and that's something I've noticed because some companies even contact me back in the day about these devices. I already owned them, I already bought them myself, but there were some interesting facts that you need to know before you're getting into this rabbit hole of mini PCs. A couple of months ago, there was a company contacting me regarding like, reviewing a product. And I basically friendly declined it, simply because it was, <laughs> it was just exactly the same case. A different color with a different own brand name on it. And that's something, in my opinion, that you need to look out for, that you're not going to be overpaying for these devices. The build quality itself is just mediocre, with, let's say, a more plastic fantastic case to it, where different brands like B-Link have a completely metal case or a very newish look. But what I do find very interesting is the things you can actually do with this. So another thing, and that is also you need to take consideration that when it comes to the cases, this is also a great example. So this is the J4125 model. You can just already see there are differences. This says Intel inside, and this is no brand whatsoever. So that is actually what I'm doing, and that is something you need to take consideration also finding them on AliExpress or Amazon or whatsoever. But how, when it comes to, let's say, the compatibility and what you can do. So one of the cool things here, you can already see it, it comes even with a built-in hard drive sometimes, or you can just add them yourself. And that is what I was going to do when it comes to Batashera. We can even add ourselves a hard drive, not using the Windows or boot or make it a dual boot, and you can just actually play. Another very cool feature, at the front you can see that we're having an on and off switch, like normal, and then have even having three USB ports. I think it's very convenient simply because if you want to use this as I say a more powerful device with emulation, hook up a couple of controllers, you can do that without any problem. At the side, or actually, yeah, it's kind of weird configuration. At the side, we're having two you uh, having an extra USB port and two HDMI connections, RG45 input for the power supply, microphone. You know, there is so much you can actually do it, and even comes with a VGA port. So when you're looking at this device, yeah, it's absolutely cool, and you can do a lot of different things with it. And that is one of those cool things with these cheap cases. So two different chipsets. So let's do a quick overview. So first of all, let's grab this bad boy. The 3000 is this thing still worth picking up. And the reason I'm saying still worth picking up because there are a lot of different options out there. So why a mini PC from this, let's say, Intel, or better said, the 3000 or 4000 series? So if you're going to be comparing this with a game box like the GX. So you're actually paying around, let's say, 50 all the way up to 150 for a game box, depending, of course, what kind of power. But we still struggle with N64. We have some overall, okay, you perform a Dreamcast. And most of the time, we have no upscaling whatsoever for PlayStation 1. 
And when we're looking into these devices, there is when we're going to have absolutely cool experience. We have so many things we can even do what we can do with game boxes. You need to make it yourself. You can buy them with a hard drive, but take us a race, you're going to pay way too, just way too much. It's going to be a hard drive and there are many different options out there. So let's chit chat about that. Okay, so I want to focus on Batasera. And the reason why, because there are some kits out there that you can get. I mean, you can buy this very nice case where you can maybe store your mini PC, but inside the case, it's completely like a kit. So this contains a hard drive, also called the PAL keypad. This isn't one of those different kind of versions you can basically buy, but also includes the controllers. Oh, I must say that I have been, let's say, bitching on these controllers forever because they are okay quality, but absolutely not the overall quality of an original PlayStation 2 controller. So take that into consideration. This is an okay quality, but I have seen way better ones out there. But this is more one of those kits you can just slap on a mini PC, configure it, and you're ready to go. But take consideration where these things claim they are like a plug and play solution, you always need to do tinkering with them. Do all, let's say, the power of the mini PCs. And not to forget also, some of the things are completely like not configured at all. So you need to have some knowledge about Batashira. Another solution what they're selling is one with or without a controller. I think one of those companies is Kinhank. It's the same situation where they're having two terabyte hard drive. I think they were even cheaper, small ones, but two terabyte is basically the sweet spot when it comes to the storage capacity. Yeah, and if you're getting into, let's say the PlayStation 3 and stuff like that, and you have a more powerful device, then you're going to be having an issue because then we need an absolute more than two terabyte. They're selling it without controller or with a controller. They are the buy top controller I'm pronouncing the name correctly. They are similar like a PlayStation 4 ish controller, very nice quality. And this kit is, in my opinion, still one of the favorite ones. But let's say you want to create yourself an own Botashera emulation beast. We can just do this by simply adding the Botashera on a USB stick and just plug it into a device. Another way is going to be with the micro SD card. Some of the devices do have even the option to add yourself a micro SD card, so that's very convenient. Also, we have an NVMe or just an SSD that can implement in your device. And this is more of the question, what will it support? And that is one of the things you need to take consideration what you're actually buying. And one of the easy ways is just if you're having an option for a 2.5 inch drive slot, you can just put in an extra SSD. Now making this video, they are quite expensive. You're going to get into the two terabytes, but of course solid state is super fast for loading and it is very reliable. Next up, and they are using a lot of these platter disc, old school, two terabytes. They are dirty cheap to get. And of course, take consideration and 2.5 inch drive is always like more expensive if you're going to be beyond the two terabyte. And actually this is one of those many ways that you can install Botocera and just actually implementing internal or external with your mini PC. But okay, so most of the guys who are basically making these drives. Yeah, you can also do it yourself. And what you can do is get yourself an enclosure and putting the platter disk in here if you don't have an internal, let's say, storage capacity. But then again, take a series, also get yourself a USB 3.0 for the best and the fastest speeds out there. Also with a platter disk, you have the faster speed disk. Of course, it will, let's say, has differences in the price, but also in the performance when you're getting a slower one. Okay, but how are we going to get the software? You can just download this for free, botasera.org. Here we can find the software that we're going to need for installing and gather yourself like this mini PC to run all kinds of retro games. So what you need to do is go into the download page and you can already see over here that we have all kinds of, let's say, hardware that is supported with Botasera. So this is not like some simple program that is only possible to use on a mini PC. There are all kinds of different handhelds and devices or just general devices that can get the Batashera running. But the thing that we're going to need, we're not going to scroll through the whole list. In here, we're finding the desktop, laptop, and other devices. That is one of the ways you can go to. But another thing you can do is, depending on what kind of software we're needing, is that we're having underneath, we're having all kinds of different versions, even to the Anthem and the low power devices. And here we're having old PCs. You can even run Batashera on that too. If you're going to be needing to flash this on a certain kind of storage device, the program that I most of the time use is Balina Etcher. It's a very nice to use free download. You can just download it for free and getting yourself your Batasera installed and flashed on. No, I don't want to have your cookies. Reject all. And then of course use this on your Windows device or even on Mac OS. From this point, you can just launch the file they've downloaded, the image file and just burn it to your storage device.
depending on the model you're having, but in the end, it's going to be the same kind of BIOS functionality. So if you're being in the BIOS, most of them are pressing the F9 or the Dell button, but before booting up Windows, here we need to go to the security. So the secure boot needs to be shut off. And the reason why, otherwise it's not possible to boot into Badasera. Another thing that you need to check out is the boot. So here you can already see boot option one has been set to Windows Boot Manager. What you need to do is set this actually to the Kin Hank or the but Badasera one you have made. What you can also do, if you don't want to use Windows, you can disable this. So we're actually only going to get ourselves the Kin Hank boot. So here we're going into the save, going to save changes and exit. And when you've done this, it will automatically boot into Badasera. Depending on how many games you have installed and how many different emulators, it will take up a little bit of time to boot up the machine itself. But Intel Inside, let's take a close look at the 3000, just do a quick overview of let's say what can we actually play and what can we actually do with this, because it is a very old chipset, so it does come with limitation, but I think it's still way better when it comes to a game box. Okay, so what do we get? We're going to get the Intel Apollo Lake Cell ROM. It's named the G3455. It comes with whooping 4 GB of RAM. Then we're going to get 64 GB of internal storage, but we're not going to use that today. Wi-Fi capabilities 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. And we're going to get a support for an HDD. And it's going to be a 2.5 inch model up to 2 TB. Alright guys, so everything has been set up. The controllers, the speakers, everything seems to be working now. So let's take a close look at the menu, but what can we play? That will be the question for today. But let's get into the Bodicera. For the people who have no idea what you can play. So basically what you can play are all the retro games, even up to Wii U is possible. Seriously, like it's crazy if you think about it. But because we are basically going on the budget when it comes to the PC hardware, then we're going to get some restrictions. So what I want to focus on with this mini PC, what can we do when it comes to PlayStation Portable, Sega Dreamcast, Sega Naomi, stuff like that, Sega Saturn, but also when it comes to the MAME arcade. Can we finally play some pretty damn decent MAME? So think about tech and tech, stuff like that, like the really demanding stuff that we can play with a Pi or with a basic Android box that costs almost the same or maybe even more. So that's what we're going to find out today and that is what we're going to test today. Alright, next up. So Killer Instinct is a system that cannot be played on Raspberry Pi 4 or you need to like start tweaking and going all crazy with overclocking. But this PC runs it without any problem. So let's boot up a game, let's fight a part of it just to see what happens. How stable it is. And of course I'm going to get my ass whooped here. But you can see like the game runs pretty damn good. It's unstretched so basically in a manual we'll need to like mess around with it to put it back on 4x3 SPS ratio. But I just wanted to give you like a quick demo how stable this game runs on a cheap PC. All right, next up, Killer Stink number two. A minor hiccup there. But it was more like a loading issue. But when you're getting into the game, it runs pretty damn good. And I really suck at this game. Okay, so next up let's use a different game in the list. Because this is a system that doesn't run very well on low end devices most of the time. You can hear like the audio is having issues. But this is more like purely an audio problem. Because so far I can see like the emulation speed is pretty damn good. It's a shame about the audio, but that can maybe be fixed.
All right, guys, so let's take a closer look at the Atomus Wave. And this system is playable on Android boxes, even the Raspberry Pi 4. But now we're going to talk about like system from the same price range. So that's the reason I wanted to start off with this system, because it's still very demanding, cannot be played on Super Console X, the cheap, the cheap, cheap boxes. So that's the reason I just wanted to pick it up. But okay, it runs pretty damn good. So let's take a close look at another system. All right, so next up, let's play some Sega Dreamcast. It's even forced into widescreen mode. So the screen will be filled up and not be stretched, that's the difference. I think when you're looking at like low power devices, you can maybe like push it a little bit better when it comes to the resolution, a little bit higher. But an overall performance is pretty damn good. And you can play Dreamcast without a hassle on this device. Okay guys, so when you're going to look up into the restrictions of this box, now we're going to reach it. You know, like, when we're going to get a lot of good performance with MAME, maybe with some tweaking, we're going to get Sega Saturn to run a little bit better, but this is what you're going to get with still low power devices. And by the way, this box was quite cheap in my opinion. And here we're going to see what the limitations are. All right, so let's see how PlayStation Portable will run, because this is a system that has a lot of problem when it comes to Android boxes. Round one. Fight. But take consideration, Tekken is not like a super demanding game compared with God of War. So this is more like, it's still powerful enough to run PlayStation Portable on two times resolution. And if you're going to get like in God of War, then you need like basically adding a lot of tweaks to it. Alright, so next up let's try a different game. Wipeout is a great example. It's still not like super demanding or like God of War, but it's like taking it to the ne next level. I can see in this game runs very well. Surprisingly pretty damn good on this cheap mini PC. So what I really like about this thing is that you're going to get a lot of value for your money. But of course, that's my opinion. Let me know what you think of that. And also when you're looking into the PlayStation 2 port, there we're going to see where is the limit of this box. PlayStation 2 is absolutely unplayable on this. And Crash Bandicoot is not even like, say, the most demanding game of the series. So and this is like the limitation, combination with Sega Saturn. But still we can play a lot of crazy, a lot of stuff with this cheap box. Okay, but let's take a close look at the 4000 series. So this thing is slightly more powerful and has more capabilities when it comes to emulation. Even way better than the 3000, but also the game box. And yep, I didn't really pay a lot of it. And if you're going to be finding them and look out for them in sales, you can still buy them maybe old stock. And then you're going to pay around, let's say $100, even less sometimes. It's crazy. And what you can do with it, oh boy. Let's take a close look at it. Okay, so time for the Wicked Nerdy time. Yeah, because we're going to take a close look at the specifications. The CPU is the G4125 Intel Celeron 2.7 GHz quad core. The GPU is just a built in HD600 from Intel, 8 GB of DDR4. The main storage is 128 GB SSD, the second one a 2 TB hard disk, it is a 2.5 inch laptop drive. Of course, two times HDMI, one time VGA, and we're having Windows 10 in combination with Boda Shira Linux. So, but what's basically using this mini PC? It's just a quad core, a basic Celeron CPU from Intel. So, even we have the option to play all of those awesome games, take considerations that we still will have some limitations. And that is what we're going to try out to find out today what are we going to get when it comes to the limitations and what can we play? I just want to point out that games like Tekken are super demanding, but it is still required some reconfiguration because you see the game will boot up, it runs really slow and there is no audio whatsoever. And this is not like that the emulator and in combination with the hardware can't run it, it's simply like a reconfiguration that is needed with the emulator itself. Okay, let's start off with MAME. Not a really demanding game.
Okay, so next up, let's try Killer Instinct. Great example. It's the same like the Tekken games. Super demanding. But this game seems to be running just fine as configured correctly. Oh, by the way, I really suck at this game. I have no idea what I'm doing here. But like Killer Instinct is a system that you can only run on a PC system like this. And Raspberry Pi 4 nowadays can also run it, but you need to overclock it like crazy. And with a PC, you don't need that. Next up, Nintendo GameCube will always be a very hard thing to emulate on a lower power device because even if it's a PC, it's a basic low power PC. But let's test out this game because it's a more demanding game like all the other ones. And most of the part it will run just fine. It runs on native resolution. If you want to upscale it, forget about it. And you can already see that it's having minor hiccups here and there. The USA, yeah! Okay, so let's see how the game runs on the PC edition. It also is very important what kind of emulator is running on the back end. So this one is running on the Mupin. And it runs way better than all the other ones I've tried before. But we got some more juice in combination with this. We can finally play some Cruise in the USA. And when I'm trying to play this game with the same kind of emulator on a Retro Station 40K or a Super Console X, I'm always going to have issues with it. Because it does have not enough juice to run it. Woo! Woo! And the more demanding games like N64 with GoldenEye. If you could configure it correctly, we can play the game. I think I just shot him in the balls. But still, it has a minor hiccup here and there. Say hello to my little friend. Alright, so with PlayStation Portable, I want to do the ultimate test, the God of War test, just to see how this runs. And you can already see from the start of this game that it works very well. You can display these things on a low-end system nowadays. Of course, if you're going to put it on a PC like this, we can have better resolutions, like full HD. Depending on what kind of CPU-GPU combination we're having, but we can just play Sega Dreamcast on the RetroStation PC perfectly without any issues. Next up, PlayStation 2. With a low-end system like this, some games will run just fine, and Saul will be super slow. But sadly, this game is way too demanding, and that is what I mean with hit or miss. But here you can see that also Crest Bandicoot has some issues. It is slow Crash Bandicoot. A new way to play. Slow motion. If it's cheap, if it's cheap to the cheap cheap, I really love it. And that's the thing, you know, when you're getting an, a lot of great performance for not a lot of money, I think this can be absolutely a great opportunity to build yourself on Batasera PC and have a lot of fun. And of course, even with Windows, you can do some things, but I want to mainly focus when it comes to the emulation part. The cases are maybe not the most beautiful ones out there, but it comes with a lot of possibilities, like a micro Z card, enough USB ports, you know, a lot of stuff we do miss with other devices, a nice form factor, and overall okay cooling performance. Yeah, let me know in the comments what do you think of this solution, would you pick it up? It would be great to subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell, and it would be great to see you, see you in the next video.